Hi and welcome to this lesson on the quadratic function where we're going to learn how to find the equation of a quadratic function given certain information. Okay, so what information do they need to give me? Well, let's first see, uh, just remind ourselves of the two formats that can be used to express a quadratic function with. So the one was a x minus p squared plus q. Okay, that is the one and the other format was fx is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay, now we can see if th um, that the number of parameters that we have, that's the unknown constants at this point, is one, two, three parameters. There are three parameters in this one and there's also three parameters in that one. Okay, which kind of means they need to give me three pieces of information for me to solve this. But what is the most significant thing that they can give me? Well, if they give me the turning point, uh, another word for the turning point is the vertex. If they give me the turning point, then I know I already have P and Q. Because the turning point's coordinate is P, Q. That P and Q represents the turning point. Okay, so if they give me the turning point, then I'll only have A left to solve. And remember this, don't forget it, when I have one variable or one parameter left to solve, I can solve it by substituting any point. So they can then add to uh, give me any other point. Okay any other point and then I'll be able to use this formula to find the equation of the parabola okay let me do one example if I had to find the equation of this uh, parabola and notice that it might not be on scale uh, drawn on scale but they did give me the information I need they gave me a turning point and they gave me the another point, the y-intercept. So I know that the y-intercept is the point 0 for x and in this case 1 for y. And then I can use this formula. Because in this formula we now know that we have p, okay, we have q and we'll just need to find a. So let's substitute what we do have. <coughs> We don't have A yet, but we know that P is the symmetry axis, which is X is equal to 1, so X minus 1 squared. And Q is the, in this case, the minimum value, okay, which is 4. And now to find A, we only need to substitute any point on the line the point we have is the point, z any other point, 0, 1. So when x is 0, y is equal to 1. So we have a is x is 0 minus 1 squared plus 4. And now if we solve a, we find a is equal to 3. And there we go. If x is equal to 3x minus 1 squared plus 4. If they wanted you to get this format, you would have still done it exactly the same, and then you know we just simplify this expression to get that expression. Okay, by multiplying out the brackets. Okay, but what if they didn't give me a, a turning point? What else can they maybe give me? Well, let's say they gave me the two roots. Now, the roots is where we cut the x-axis. Let's say they gave me the two roots. Now we know where we cut the x-axis is where fx is equal to 0. In other words, if we would have had our expression, our parabola or quadratic expression, and we would made it equal to 0, then the two answers that we'll get in the end would have been x equal to r1 
and x equal to r2. That would have been my two answers, and that's where I made my intercepts. So the step just before this one was when I had, well, x minus r1 is equal to 0, and x minus r2 must be equal to 0. Okay, and this must have come from another step before this that said that if I had the two brackets x minus r1 multiplied by x minus r2, then those two brackets gave me 0. That's why one of them had to be 0. And now I see r. Oh, if I multiply out these two brackets, then I will get an expression that looks like that. Okay, so if I do, I just want to make myself some space, if I do multiply it out, I get x squared, but then I see, oh, there's a problem. That x squared has an a in front, which means that we need to put an a in front here as well. And what might have happened before we uh, found the solution was we divided both sides with an a, because 0 divided by a would have just still been 0. We could have done that. So there might have been an a there initially. And I don't need to go and do all of the steps back, because now I see this expression represents f of x. So another formula or format in which I can write my uh, quadratic function is in the format a x minus root 1 multiplied by x minus root 2. And again we see the parameters that we have to solve. There's three parameters. We have parameter a, parameter r1, and parameter r2. Where r1 and r2 represents the um, x-intercepts, and they are given to me, which means um, or they're also called roots, which means I still have one parameter left to solve, and in order to solve it, I must add, they must give me any other point as well. So a point other than the, uh, the x-intercepts. And then I'll be able to do it. So let's do an example like that. Here we can see a question where we are given the two roots, x is equal to negative 3 and x is equal to 1 and we're given another point, the point negative 2 comma 6 which means we can use this way of expressing a quadratic function here we go and since we already have the two roots we can substitute it in there so we have x minus minus 3 that gives me plus 3 x plus 3 and then we also have x minus root 2 which is r uh, which is 1 x minus 1 okay and now we still just need to go and find for a so we can find a he's the last parameter left to solve which means we solve it by substituting any point and the point we can substitute is y is equal to 6 when x is equal to negative 2. So we replace x with negative 2 and then we find that a negative 2 times um, plus 3 positive 1 and negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3 so positive 1 times negative 3 gives me negative 3 which means that a must equal negative 2. And there we go. So if we had to express it as ax squared plus bx plus c, we would say that negative 2x, let me just multiply this out. So we get x squared minus, uh, plus 3x minus 1 is plus 2x. Uh, negative uh, 3 minus 1 times negative 1 is um, negative 3 and we just multiply it out and then we find negative 2x squared 
minus 4x positive 6. There we go. Easy as pie. I hope you enjoy doing a few of them on your own and I can assure you, you will find a question like this in one of your exams. Good luck.